all depends on if you're going solo or if you're going with another party, like somebody else. Um, and you have to take into consideration their body weight. You do. If you're the sterns person, which is the back of the boat, then you're in control of the boat, right? So if you're lighter than the bow person, you're going to load the canoe differently than if that bow person, the front, is lighter than you. The reason being, you need the boat to be symmetrical on the water. In other words, you want it to be balanced on the water. You want to make sure that the stern, the stern and the bow are both in the water equally. You do not want a tipped up end. No control. This boat, made by Swift, it does not have a keel. I don't like keels. Keels um, are an impediment when you're on calm water or not just calm water, but brackish water like the pond, the, this pond that's in front of me. Um, when you're on a lake that's windy, right? Um, so in other words, you're, you're, you've got a good, a good um, crosswind coming at you, a keel can help out. However, a properly loaded boat, especially a prospector, prospector boats are designed to handle almost anything. It's one of the oldest mo it's one of the oldest designs out there. They have they have a the way their hull is designed, the bow digs in and the stern digs in. That's how it is unless you load improperly. So, let's get at it. If you want to load the boat properly, what you have to do, figure out your body weights, get that sorted out. Now, let's assume that the person that is in the bow is lighter than you like me and my son all right so let's just assume that if they are lighter than you then you're going to want to load most of your gear forward right so i'll show you first and foremost your the canoe pack this is the eureka pack right i like to put the eureka pack roughly center of the boat right here I have access to its contents, not necessarily inside it, but on the outside in the, in the pockets I have several items that I may want to get, right? Secondly is the goal zero, which is my charger. I like to charge my batteries as I'm paddling, why not? So I leave it open on the pack just like that. It'll charge as we're paddling, doesn't matter if it gets wind, uh, water spray on it, the thing's waterproof anyway, it doesn't matter. So it's all good. That goes there. Next, your food barrel. Now this food barrel, depending on what you bring, I only bring dehydrated food. Why carry the extra weight? It's not worth it. Um, you're camping. You, if you're not doing any portages, bring whatever you want. It doesn't matter, right? If you do one portage, your first day in, have at it. You can have bacon and eggs. You can do whatever you want. Bring what you want. Just make sure that if you're going any further than that, you're going to want light food. This goes in the bow. So that fits right there in the bow of the boat. Okay. Now, as you can see, I'm almost loaded. Just like that, I'm almost loaded. We can be off the portage trail in seconds, literally, depending on how, if it's busy or if it's, doesn't matter, we can be off it real quick. Now, the other thing, your thermo rests, all right? Remember these things? These are for sleeping, obviously. These fit underneath the seats. However, while I'm paddling, I do not leave them under the seat in case I need to kneel down if I have a good wind at me or whatever. I like to kneel. I have kneeling pads in the canoe. Um, these thermo rests, I just simply slide up the side of the boat, just like this. Okay, either side, just... That balances the boat. If you tip, now if you tip, you got a problem. But if you tip, the thermo rests float, the barrel floats, you'll get it back. Your pack will sink. So, I always, there's two schools of thought on this. For me, I, um, I normally tie the bag to my thwart. 
all right I normally put a, I'll put a quick lash around it just using one of the buckles or just whatever um, why I don't want to lose my pack simple right the boat's gonna float it'll float with that pack in it no problem in fact the boat will float if you tip it right side up it's full of water you get in it with the pack and everything else it's still gonna float it'll be underwater but she'll float um, so I always tie my gear down right so that's tied down uh, the last thing are your the fanny pack doohickeys I lay one in front of if I'm in the stern then I'll lay that in front of me why it's got my compass in it it's got um, it's got all kinds of gear in it like just small gear that I may need right so my compass is most important so it's in that pack with my son it goes in front of him just like that why load a boat out like this? Because if the, if the person in the bow needs to kneel down to get, get, their, get into that, into that uh, chop, get their paddle deep in the water, then what they're gonna do is they need the space behind them for their feet, all right? Done. That's your boat loaded. You can uh, literally load the boat in minutes and be uh, on the water and unload in minutes, all right? Because Time doesn't really count when you're out there. I don't bring a watch, I don't care. I just watch the sun, but one thing that's important when you're out there is um, knowing your distances for the day. For example, one particular day, we're doing 22 kilometers in a day, and that includes portaging. 3,000 kilometers, 3,000, I'll be all right, three kilometers of portaging um, in one jump. Right, that's a long portage. Trust me, when you got this thing bearing down on your shoulders, it's a long portage. So, um, pack light, pack smart. Don't carry stuff you don't need. It's superfluous. You don't need it. Leave it. You don't need it. People bring too much stuff. I see it on the trails. It's absolutely horrid. They bring grills with them. They bring stuff that you just... It's unbelievable. I've found camp chairs. I've found all kinds of gear out there that just doesn't need to be there. Um, bring, be a minimalist. Bring what you need, not what you want. Okay? Go through your gear. Every piece of gear should have several functions. For example, the thermarests. This becomes your seating pad when you're sitting around the uh, around wherever if you're just hanging out goes in between your legs you sit on it you straddle it you're good to go right you got a nice seating pad done perfect you don't need to carry a chair you don't have to have it the um as far as your uh, i don't carry pillows who needs a pillow you just your clothing bag you use that as your pillow all right put that underneath your uh underneath your head you get used to it and it's it's when you're halfway along a portage trail yeah you'll be happy you camped light you brought light honestly you'll be happy